Is Maurizio Sarri in danger of being fired? Deli Alley leaves Spurs in a transfer limbo. PSG take their dominance in league up to new heights. There's transfer rumors from around Europe. And of course, we look back on your Friday feels. That are more coming up in the next few minutes as I am your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off, and is Maurizio Sarri in danger of being fired from Chelsea? Over the weekend, they were absolutely terrible in their 2-0 loss to Arsenal. However, I will give the Gunners massive credit because they played an excellent game. I also thought Lacazette had one of his best performances in an Arsenal shirt. But aside from that, Sarri literally seemed to be void of any sort of tactic. It's like he was playing school football where you just stick your best player up front. Hazard was yet again the main striker and basically was charged with providing the few moments of magic that would hopefully see Chelsea over the line. Now, I don't completely blame Sarri for it because Chelsea haven't been giving him enough backing in the transfer market. They still haven't signed anyone and even with Gonzalo Higuain potentially coming in in the next few days, I'm not sure he'll be able to sort everything out just by being one decent striker. As for Hazard, well, it's clear that when he drops deeper, he's in a much better role and he's given the freedom to do whatever he likes, which is usually something good, instead of being a hold-up man for Chelsea. Every time they went forward, they put it out to the wide men, crossed it in the box, and neither Kante, Pedro, Willian, Hazard, or anyone else is really going to jump above the Arsenal centre-backs and get their head on the ball. So what were they thinking? They were never going to score. This means that Arsenal and Manchester United are closer to Chelsea in fourth position. It also means that if they lose in the League Cup semi-final to Spurs and lose their FA Cup fourth round tie at the weekend, Sarri could be in real danger of losing his job. And talking of that League Cup semi-final, Tottenham will be heading into to it on a massive high after their last minute winner against Fulham. Harry was the saviour, but this time not Harry Kane, Harry Winks, as he managed to nod in for Spurs, giving them all three points and was a pretty scrappy affair. However, aside from this victory though, things look worse for Spurs on the injury list as Deli Alli pulled up with what looks like a pulled hamstring. This means that he could be out until the end of the month and highly likely that he won't play any part in the game against Chelsea on Thursday evening. So, will Daniel Levy go out and sign a replacement for Spurs? Probably not even though it's much needed. Harry Kane step in Fernando Llorente had can what only be described as the worst half of football for a professional footballer. As a striker, he contributed absolutely nothing to the team. And even when he did manage to find the back of the net, it was his own net as he gave Fulham the lead in the first half. The chances of Hyung Sun Min returning early from the Asian Cup are highly unlikely as well, with South Korea taking on Minnow's Bahrain on Tuesday. But you never know, weirder things have happened in the sport. As for a replacement, well, Andy Carroll is the latest name linked to Tottenham for just two million, but that seems like it will never happen. A switch across London for the Hammers forward brings with it a whole load of injury problems. And even when he is fit, he's still not up to the task of replacing Kane, of which many strikers aren't, let's be honest. So Spurs fans, I want to hear from you. Do you need to sign anyone because of the injuries? And if so, who? Let me know in the comments section below. Up next, then to some news from League R, where PSG have taken their dominance to a whole new level. Over the weekend, they equaled their joint highest victory ever with a 9-0 win over Lowly Gwingham. They currently sit bottom of the league and, well, things aren't looking so great for them. For PSG, the front three are back and in fine form. Kylian Mbappe got a hat-trick, Edison Cavani got a hat-trick, and Neymar got two. Alongside Thomas Mounier, the route was complete, so everything's looking rosy at PSG at the moment. Unless, of course, you're Adrian Rabiot, who's been exiled to the under-23s and will not play a further part in PSG's first team season because he's refused to sign a new contract. It looks like things will be pretty depressing for him until he finds a move away from the club. Elsewhere in Ligue 1, though, things are looking terrible for Thierry Henry and Monaco. At the weekend, they had a man, Naldo, making his home debut, sent off in the first four minutes. They went on to lose 5-1 at home to Strasbourg and things are looking pretty bad for the Frenchman. Even with the likes of Michi Batshuayi and Jelson Martins linked to the club, I don't think they'll be able to save their season and it could be that Henri faces relegation in his first full-time job. As for Monaco, if Henri does leave, well, who could come in to save them? i got two names, Jose Mourinho or Sam Allardyce. You guys have your pick. And now to a quick roundup of the day's transfer news, where apparently Juventus are close to signing Matteo Darmian from Manchester United on a loan deal. Hamas Rodriguez will reject Arsenal to stay on loan at Bayern Munich until the end of the season before holding talks with parent club Real Madrid. Jelson Martins, the Atletico midfielder, as we've just mentioned, is apparently interesting Monaco, although I'm not sure they'll be able to afford him on a permanent basis. And lastly but not least, Cardiff have signed Salah. That's the Argentinian Emiliano Salah from Nantes in France. He was the division's third top goal scorer, and Neil Warnock will be hoping that he can fire Cardiff out of the relegation zone and into Premier League safety. And finally, we come to your Friday feels, which you left in the comment section on Friday's show with Paddy. 
First off, we have Alessandro Salmoni, who guessed that Spurs would win 2-1. Next up is Joseph Ehuma, who guessed that Sadio Mane would get on the score sheet for Liverpool, and he did in their 4-3 victory over Crystal Palace. But such was the nature of the weekend's football that not actually many of you got the correct score. And it's because of this that I'd like to save our last Friday field shout out to someone who might be feeling a little embarrassed this Monday morning. So this shout out goes to you, Dike Ezeke. I think I pronounced that right. He had to go at everyone in the comment section for being foolish, but ended up looking not so clever. <clears throat> Let me read out his YouTube comment from Friday. Everyone that predicts Arsenal will beat Chelsea, ha, you're wrong. Let's not forget their defence is crap. Ramsey is leaving. Will Ozil make the squad? Arsenal lost 5-0 to Liverpool, so I predict 3-1 to Chelsea, ending your top four hopes. Chelsea for the win. Now, normally I wouldn't call someone out, but when you're going to laugh at other people just for having a prediction, you've got to be able to take it back yourself. Now, I'm not laughing or taking the mick at all, but maybe don't be so cocky beforehand when there's a good chance that your prediction may not come off. As for now, though, you can leave all of your comments down below. You can hit the like button and also click here and here to check out all of the other videos that we've got going on on OneFootball. But from me, that's all we have time for. Have a great week and I will see you guys later.